Hello everybody, and welcome to Anatomy. This is the game that I've been building up for with all these kitty horror show games. Um, so before I play the first tape, let me give a brief introduction. So this is a game that kitty horror show is charging money for. You can consider it a full game. It's still cheap. It's about three dollars. And the one thing that I've noticed in other playthroughs of this game is the comment section is usually filled with people who can't understand the tapes. And as you're going to see in a minute, it's because they're all distorted. So I will be supplying my own subtitles to this game. So you can follow along with the transcript. Although I recommend playing it for yourself if you're able to cough up three dollars for it. And let's begin our first tape. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the Neolithic era, humankind has defined itself by its buildings. Buildings for worship, buildings for socializing, buildings for protection, even buildings for the commemoration of the dead. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. There's a table in the dining room. I am collecting these tapes and we are listening to them together. The house is one of the key elements that separates modern humanity from its more primitive antecedents. No other creature goes to such lengths to create lasting, permanent shelter for itself, nor regards said shelters with such reverence and import. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy toward their homes? There are many reasons, of course, but perhaps it is due in some small part to seeing them as a reflection of ourselves. Fair enough. There's a tape in the downstairs bathroom, which I believe is this right here. Yep. I played it before. Um, I will say that this game is one of the few indie horror games that actually really got to me. The anatomy of the house is such that this analogy is less superficial than at first it may seem. To carry it further, if we were to dissect a house as we might a human cadaver, we would find ourselves able to isolate and describe its various appendages and their functions in a decidedly anatomical fashion. There is even a fair number of direct comparisons to be drawn between those organs of a house and those of a human body. There's a tape in the garage. Alright, well, let's um, see how much we can stress these comparisons then. God, that was just hard to get. For example, let us examine the living room. Often the dominant space of a house is ground level, as well as typically the center of activity in a well-populated home. The living room is very much the heart of the house. While a human heart circulates blood to oxygenate the body's extremities, the living room circulates people, activity, communication. It is the room most likely to be found beating, as active and vivacious as its name would imply. The comparison is only strengthened when we consider also that the living room is most commonly the room to contain the fireplace, making it additionally a locus of actual physical heat. Guess where we're going next. Yep. <laughs> Knew it. It's not even plugged in the television. Lovely decor. I'm going to be editing this a little bit less, but I will, I'm going to be editing this a little bit less. You'll see me walk into the various rooms. 
It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of a house, though this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The hallways and corridors of a house are its veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of a house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a tall, dark manor will tell you that it is difficult to shake the impression that the house, through its lightless windows, is a creature capable of vision and intelligence. I can't really say that I've shared that sentiment before. Um, a lot of people were unsure about the gender of the tape player, but I've seen no other uh, credits in Kitty's text, so I assume that this is her voice acting the tapes herself. If anybody knows otherwise, or she can correct me herself, feel free. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch, and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, dreams are dreamt, passions are ignited, epiphanies are experienced in cold sweat at early hours. In the bedroom is where people invariably spend the majority of their time, though comparatively little of it whilst conscious. There's a tape in the bedroom. Let's go up to it. I had the option to run, as I've done in previous kitty horror games, but I think I'm going to walk for this one. I will jump skip a tiny bit just to spare you guys me when I'm pausing or something like that. And yet this analogy is an incomplete one, for obviously the mind is an exceedingly complex thing. If the bedroom represents the thinking, dreaming part of the brain, then it is the basement that represents those lower, unconscious parts. The basement is dark. It is buried. It is a place full of cobwebs where memories are stored. A poignant comparison, truly. Often the unnerving uncertainty that comes with considering the deeper aspects of the human psyche is not unlike gazing down at the swimming blackness pooled at the bottom of a basement stairwell. It is a place we spend our childhoods filling with monsters that will lay for years in patient silence. It is a place that, barring some specific errand, we seldom ever want to go. Now that I can bore relate to. The one thing that this game does well is it really does invoke these childhood fears of your own house that you had as a child. And that is something I've never experienced with a horror game before. However, thankfully in this basement, not much is going on. Is there going to be a monster at the top of the stairs? <laughs> no, there isn't. But we are going to shut this. Just in case. Don't want anything creeping out of there, am I right? Of course, this comparison, though appropriate, is a very heavy-handed one. And often the basement is little more than a storage space, littered with the corpses of spiders and wood lice. While poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, the waking mind, that place of dreams, which is actually the most frightening of all. There's a tape in the master bedroom. Oh no, what do you got for me this time? Oh, okay, it's this room. So we tried before, the other doors are locked. There we 
There we go. Where, where did the door go? The door's gone. It was here, in the bedroom, that we are at our most vulnerable. Each night we shut our senses to the world for hours at a time, trusting in the house to keep us safe until next we wake. In this state of extreme vulnerability, we will spend something like 20% of our lives. Anything might stand beside us, watch us, keep us company until dawn, and we would never perceive it. We can only pray that the house will not let such things carry on as we sleep. In this way, during these hours, the bedroom seems less like a mind and more like a mouth. For it is here that the house is most likely to betray us. It is here that we place ourselves most at the house's mercy and spend each night hoping that it will not bite down. The game closed itself, so I opened it up real quick just to save ourselves time. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since the early of the monastic era, humankind has defined the era of God. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. You okay there? Uh, there's a tape in the dining room. Um, is the game having a stroke? Oh, oops. I just saw a prompt. I was curious. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy, 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 sympathy? There's a tape of the downstairs bathroom. Well, at least the game fixed itself. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Doors are unlocked. Luckily they have a bit of a going white so I can tell from a distance. Apparently, the audio of that is actually from a Thomas Edison doll, which to me, if true, is kind of amazing to hear about. Yeah, it seems like the game's glitching a little bit. Now, something tells me that it is on purpose. I'm walking the wrong way. Good tape. Very informative. Mm -hmm. There's a tape in the living room. Thank you. Oh. Now the tape's glitching. You're not even plugged in. How are you turning on? 
It is easier to think of the protection and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of the house, as is compiled for this tenuous. By contrast, the function and analyze of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The hallways and corridors of the house are like veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of the house serve much the same purpose as eyes, while anyone who has ever rounded a bend on a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a pale, dark manner will tell you that the house is a creature capable of the uh, the tape grows distorted as it starts comparing the house to a monster. I think that's a nice touch. Yeah, I was wondering. I was about to ask, like, was it bright in here before? Okay, now this one's just floating in the air. Like, I don't remember there being light in here. Is it still locked? <laughs> I guess it might as well be. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, do, 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 do. I dream that there are teeth growing all over me, everywhere on me and in me, like cysts or bone spurs. They're loose, but I can't remove them because I have no hands. I look out through the bedroom window and I see a truck approaching. A young man steps out, approaches, and enters through the front door. His body is covered in swollen ticks the size of quarters. He's walking through the downstairs hallway and laughing. He begins urinating on the wall. He spits on the carpet. He's moving through the first floor, breaking and upsetting things. He goes to the basement and stands at the top of the stairs. I'm angry at him, so I slam the door and he falls down. I can feel his bones snapping. The ticks are bursting, losing all black blood everywhere. I can feel them being ground up, dissolved and torn, splitting and shredding. I leave the door closed. I close my eyes and try to sleep. The teeth continue growing on me until there is nothing left of me but teeth and gums and sinew. The basement is dark. Okay. Just uh, don't shut the door behind me. Game closed again. I'm not in, I'm in the master bedroom. Screens from Suicide Mouse to Creepy Pasta. The house. I don't think the house is happy with me. So. All right. What the? What's? Start our first tape, I suppose. 
Probably gonna be the same things, more or less. Okay. <laughs> I really don't have much of a response to that. Next tape. <laughs> I noticed that the paintings are gone as well. The uh, the two mirrors have now become separate. Is this tape going to be much the same? <laughs> Hurts. Never came back. I can't turn the TV off now. Um, probably in one of the upstairs rooms. Aha, this one. Okay. So that's supposed to be. I'm not sure what those are. It's supposed to be exactly. Basement yet? No. Okay, so we found it in the living room. I'm sorry, I had to jump ahead of a little bit. If we were to back up now, we would find organs and stomach and brain and vines and eyes. <laughs> Dreams and memories and come out that will bite down. I think that was like three tapes in one. Oh. It's not even a door to the basement anymore. I guess I have to go down. Was the texture down here always like that? There is an important distinction that must be drawn between the words deception and vivisection. A distinction that would appear to be lost on you. Your purpose was to listen, and yet at every turn you have pride, you have prodded, and you have interfered. Have you not been paying attention? Did it not occur to you that as an organism existing within a greater organism, your intrusion would be felt? And still you harass. And now, like the wayward spider who witlessly settles upon a sleeper's tongue, you will be swallowed. Because the truth is this. When a house is both hungry and awake, every room becomes a mouth. Oh, 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 they're seeing. Uh, give me one second as I try to play this tape and then we can go on to my opinion. What happens to a house when it is left alone? When it becomes worn and aged? When its paint peels and its foundations begin to sink? 
that goes for too long and lived in. What does it think of? What does it dream? How does it regard those creatures who built it? Brought it into existence only to abandon it? But its usefulness no longer satisfies them. It may grow lonesome. It may stare for long hours into the darkness of its own empty halls and see shadows. And its heart may jump as it thinks, Here, here is someone again, I'm not alone. And each time it is wrong. And the hurt starts over. It may find itself inventing ghosts to walk its floor, making friends with its shadow puppets, laughing and whispering to itself at the end of some quiet cul-de-sac. It may grow angry. Its basement may fill with churning acid like an empty stomach and its gorge may rise as it asks itself through clenched teeth, what did I do wrong? It may grow bitter. It may grow hungry. So hungry and so bitter that its scruples dissolve and its doors unlock themselves. While a house may hunger, it cannot starve. And so, in fever and anger and loneliness, it may simply lie in wait. Doors open. Shades drawn. Hallways empty. Hungry. And that was anatomy. I really do think that this is one of the better indie horror games that I've played in a long while. It's one of the few games that ever truly made me uncomfortable and to this day it's I still get a little bit of a spine chill during segments like when the second voice over the tape recorder starts playing. At least I think there's supposed to be two different entities. I think the ending speech kind of hit a particular chord with me. As somebody who used to work in a nursing home, you kind of get that feeling. Now, I wasn't working with a patient. I was a dietary aide. You kind of get that feeling from some of the residents, some of the more cynical ones, the ones who are just waiting until their final days, more or less. It's not hard to make the comparison to the house at the end of the speech to somebody in that particular mindset. One other thing to note is the ending. Well, not this, but the one where I was in the stomach. There are apparently two different endings because I saw in somebody else's playthrough that they were walking toward a house and apparently there's a third one somewhere out there. I'm not sure how to trigger them, so unfortunately I can't show all three. And if you want to try yourselves and tell me if what the third one is, if it exists, go ahead, be my guest. The game is three dollars. I say the experience is worth it. I do think that the tapes themselves were well written. This is a game that is definitely made for you to be experienced forever to watch, I would say. So if any of this interested you this way into the video, I'd say go ahead and try it for yourself. I would say like this would rank up one of my highest regarded indie horror games alongside games like I'm Scared. And I think this game and Kitty Horror Show herself is heavily underrated. That being said, we are not done with Kitty Horror Show. So for those of you who stuck around this channel for a bit watching the videos on her games, fear not because there are a few more we have yet to tackle. So anyway. Nez Anatomy, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching.